Well, welcome back, race fans. Steve Letard here from NBC Sports with our gambling odds guru from the Action Network, PJ Walsh. PJ, it's been like 75 or 80 days since I have filmed one of these with you. Welcome back. It feels good to be talking about race cars back on the racetrack. Who's counting? Yeah. 75 to 80 days, who's counting? You got me in a polo. That's how excited I am to have racing back. I love it. I love it. Dressed up with the situation. Right. Uh, listen, there's a lot to talk about, but the first thing I think we need to talk about is the next 10 days are going to be packed, right? So the race fan, pay attention and don't wander too far from whatever device you set in your lineups because we have Sunday afternoon on Fox at 3.30, the cup cards at Darlington. They're back at Darlington on Wednesday. Then at Charlotte the next weekend. Then at Charlotte the next Wednesday. We're talking four races in 10 days. That's going to be part of our discussion. But, I mean, I've been thirsting for some live action. I'm going to get enough in the next 10 days. It's going to be awesome. It is. And don't forget, we're going to have Xfinity trucks in there, in there too. So it's better as it's going to be a pretty hectic 10, 11 days. Yeah. Kyle Bush actually said he's going to run them all. That's what I read the other day. He said he's going to sign up and run them all, which, hey, for that reason, let's talk Kyle Bush. Let's jump right into NASCAR, Fantasy Live, get your lineup set. Remember, the rules are still in place. There's going to be a limitation on your drivers as the season goes. So it's really, what do we expect? What do we know heading into Darlington? Let's make sure the fans that are watching us understand zero practice, none. Zero garage time, zero qualifying, the cars show up ready to race, a little inspection. Because of the social distancing rules, the drivers basically walk from their motorhome by themselves. They jump in, green flag, 400 miles. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. As, as a better in fantasy players, we have no data. So <laughs> the only thing we can look at is Darlington results and maybe the first three races. Daytona probably doesn't even matter, right? So I'm not looking at Daytona, so it's tough for the drivers, but it's going to be tough for fantasy players and betters. Well, I have data. I don't know how much it's worth. I'm using a lot of gut. That's the key. Of, a little bit of uh, fallback. So let's jump right in Fancy Live. So I'm going to jump right into my lineup. Um, a little bit in numerical order, a little bit in favorites. And it starts with Brad Kozlowski. He's absolutely in my Fancy Live. So my approach, so I think the strategy was this. You either don't use the big names because you're concerned how the first race back is going to go. I'm the opposite. I'm using all the big names because I think the veterans, while this is a storyline and we do need to watch it, and someone may – the snake bitten because of this format. The veterans are the veterans. They've they made thousands and thousands of laps. I think they will adapt. I think they'll take the green flag. They'll know when to be patient, when to push. So for that reason, the cornerstone, I have big names. I have uh, the two of Keselowski, the four of Harvick, the 18 of Kyle Busch, all three in my line. I agree with that, and I agree with your overall strategy. Those are three of the favorites. This is not the race to pick sleepers. We have no practice. We have no qualifying. So I think the, the real strategy is take the studs this week, roll out the big guns, the guys with experience, like you mentioned, and then on Wednesday, see some of those uh, guys further down the board who perform well on Sunday, then pick them on Wednesday. I like that thought. I like that thought. Listen, everybody likes a reason. Here you go, Brad Kozlowski won in 2018, a couple mm -hmm. straight top fives. He's a Darlington, great at Darlington. You talk Kevin Harvick, won in 14. I want to forget that race. We needed one last green-white checker, and he wouldn't have won at 14. But more importantly, seven straight finishes of ninth or better at the track, too tough to tame. So I don't find that as a gamble at all. Denny Hamlin, Mr. I-Racing, he's won a couple I-Races, and he's won a couple times at Darlington. Um, I don't know, he just strikes me as the kind of guy that's going to show up professional, show up dialed in, look at this as an opportunity to capitalize. And then Kyle Busch, when I look at him, he won at Darlington. I know it was all the way back in 08. Same thing, though. Three straight finishes the seventh or better. Those are consistencies out of those big four names. Do any of those scores scare you? Keselowski does a little bit because of the Paul Wolf factor, right? Like, he, he's a guy that can kind of nail strategy, is good at setting up cars, thinks outside the box. So not having him may hurt Keselowski. So I almost went with Joe Logano for that reason, but exactly. I think the layoff is going to help Brad Keselowski. I think him and his new team, I know they haven't been able to hang out, but we're, we're on Zoom, right? Other people have talked on video. You, you, we're hanging out. <laughs> if, I was, if I was Brad Kozlowski, I would have spent some time in this break to sit down with my crew chief and be like, okay, let's just we'll circle the wagons here. Let's see what happened to start the year. You know, we're both very talented. Let's get it going in the right direction. For that reason, I'm not saying Brad's my favorite to win, but I do think they're going to try to, you know, get the right foot forward and just have a good solid day. Yeah, and he's 8-1, too, so you're not, you're not going too far down the odds board. And he, he drew the pole, so – He'll be up front. So it's not a terrible pick. It, I just think the Paul Wolf factor is enough to maybe uh, pivot to somebody else. 
Yeah, no, I like that theory. I won't lie. I'm a little concerned about Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch just because of the Toyota factor. They started slow in the year. Same reason. I think the break is going to help TRD and Toyota, Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, while they haven't been able to go to the shop, maybe and work on cars, sometimes a breath will help you. I bring that up because my fifth and final driver is also a JGR Toyota. So I'm going to have three in the field, and it's not going to include Martin Truex Jr. I'm actually taking Eric Jones. He won at Darlington back in 19. But surprisingly, even for a young driver, as I say, consistent, three straight top eights. And I was surprised by that stat. He just doesn't come to mind, but I don't know, maybe it's the short track. It's kind of at feel of Darlington, slipping and sliding, staying off the wall. But Eric Jones runs well. Yeah, he's a really trendy pick in terms of betting and fantasy circles. I'm having trouble because, like you mentioned, JGR was, was slow out of the gates for them. I mean, I don't, I don't think they were necessarily slow. So I'm actually pivoting off of him just because I think he's overvalued at 16-1. to 1. I don't want to bet that. So I'll let you bet him. So, yeah, so let's say the thing. Am I picking him as a winner? No. But is he in my fantasy live? Yes. Yeah. Now, my garage pick, we're going to talk about a lot when it comes to odds because this is also a sleeper pick. And I don't care what the numbers say. I'm taking William Byron in the 24. I'm going to give you a multitude of reasons. I believe in momentum. I don't care if it was I racing. He's fast in every single one. I think it helps anybody's confidence, and he can go do it in real life. A year ago in the famed City Chevrolet car, he was fast at Darlington. His numbers didn't finish there, but the car was up front. They had pace. And the other thing, Chad Knauss. Chad Knauss hasn't been sitting at home just hanging out for the last couple months. He's been figuring out what that car needs to make the next step. He knows the next step is victory lane. So not only is he in my garage, but when we get later in this, he's my long shot. I, say, I know you say don't take long shots. Well, I didn't really buy him for long shot pick. That surprises me. It really does. And once again, I'm coming at this as a better. He's 25 to 1, so maybe he's not as, as long as people think. 25 to 1, that's Jimmy Johnson. I think uh, Kenseth is in that range. And me personally, I like Kurt Busch at 22 to 1 instead. So, again, you can have Byron. I'll take Kurt Busch. All right, so real quick, while we round out our fancy live lineup, two names I wanted to touch on there. Matt Kenseth, no one's used him because he wasn't in a car. He's coming back. I'm taking the approach that I think Matt will be someone I'm going to pick in the future. But let's be fair, even a champion who hasn't been in a car in over a year, green flag at Darlington, I think he's going to be forced to be a little patient. And he's never run with this package either. So that, that's even tougher. Hasn't been in the race car, has never run this package, no practice, no qualifying. I believe in Kenseth, but he's a Wednesday guy for me. Yeah, I agree. So there you go. Get your picks in. NASCAR Fantasy Live. No pole pick because there is no qualifying. The race is at, on Fox, 3.30 on Sunday afternoon at Darlington. It's going to be a blast.